We're gonna introductions. Explain our art. I think the mic's live. <laughs> <laughs> We are on the dock. Good afternoon, everybody. How are we doing? You want to learn how to stream some art, huh? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> I, I love the passion. All right. You're going to be the next streamer that I follow now. <laughs> but if y'all don't know who I am, I am Ashley, also known as Miss Ash Rocks. I'm a Twitch partner, Twitch ambassador. You probably see my face all over TwitchCon, so... That's me. Hello. Different wig, though. But <laughs> super excited to be the host of this panel today. We have some amazing, talented artists up here. You're going to learn all the nitty gritty about how to stream art. And you get to learn about their experience and hear their stories. So let's dive into it. We're going to start off with intros here. All right. We first have Caitlin, my love. <laughs> if you can share about, you know, your content creation journey and your art journey, we'd oh, love yeah. to hear it. Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Caitlin McKaig. Um, I do mostly creature art and comic stuff. Um, I got into Twitch and YouTube when I couldn't really secure a job fresh out of college. So I was like, I'm just going to make stuff myself. And so that's kind of what I jumped into. Uh, but this is still kind of a side hustle for me. So I still have a full time job, but then I'm streaming on the side. Um, yeah, so I'm a graphic designer by day. And then this is some of my art. I like Dungeons and Dragons, monsters, comics, the whole shebang. <laughs> wow, you are so good. No, I, I, I told Kaylin, I said, yeah, I can't do any of this. I will just pay you to do it. <laughs> I can maybe draw a circle perfectly. Perfect circle. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Chris. Let's learn a little about you too. I'm uh, Chris Keiko. I'm a full-time Twitch streamer. I work with DeviantArt, and um, my streams are focused around just studying fundamentals, and uh, I do full-time cons as well, and I uh, like to do live art, like ink artwork, uh, heavily influenced by uh, Kim Jong-gi, and um, yeah, it's just it's nice to be here. That's what we do on my stream, just hang out and study, and that's some of my work there. Perfect, thank you. Casey. Hi, I'm Casey. Um, I s started on YouTube. I don't know if that's a bad word to say here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I moved to Canada and I didn't have a job, so I started making YouTube videos to just fill in my time and just stay creative. Uh, then I started doing streaming, which brought me to Twitch. Um, I honestly just like to focus on creating silly, fun artwork that just makes people laugh or just is goofy and fun to make. So um, I'm fully employed by myself doing YouTube video streams, merch, all that stuff. And um, yeah, I just, I draw a lot of ants, uh, prompts, stuff like that. Yeah. Lots of ants. <laughs> Lots of ants. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And Priscilla, let's learn a little about you too. Hi, I'm Priscilla, AKA Valorant Vellum on Twitch. Um, I do all kinds of artwork, uh, art prints, stickers, enamel pins, designer toys, and uh, like a lot of people, once the shutdown happened, I kind of turned to Twitch, and um, you know we were able to create uh, an amazing community that just kind of came together because we needed that socialization. Um, so yeah, the, and I've been, um, I mean, thanks to the shutdown, I started learning how to do a bunch of other times, types of like art uh, media as well. So. So yeah, that's about it. And um, I still at a lot of conventions and um, you can see some of my art here. So there's the designer toys, an example of one of the pins. And then uh, I do a lot of like Asian folklore kind of content. So it's mostly original character art. Perfect, thank you. Oh, we can clap, we can do it. <laughs> Hello, oh, okay. It wasn't working earlier. Um, hi, I'm Poku, or most people, <laughs> hello. Uh, most people call me Poku on Twitch, uh, Pokuri Mio, the long version, but my real name is Gina. Nice to meet you guys. Um, I've been streaming on Twitch for about six years, uh, mostly art the whole time, video games here and there. Um, I work on a comic called Clinic of Horrors with the writer Meriwether. I don't know if you guys heard of him before. Um, and. Yeah, mostly anime uh, inspired, anime manga inspired artwork that I do there. Yep, that's Ooh. me. I like the metal one. 
<laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Now we're going to get into why would anyone want to stream art, all right? We stream art because we want to share our process and how we create art is something we want to share with our communities, all right? Meeting people with a similar interest as well is important and helps you keep focus. You know, you can get your commissions done while you're streaming and share that with your community. And, you know, your audience feels more connected to the art and getting to interact with you during that process is amazing. It's a great feeling. And, you know, this can also turn into more sales, you know, commissions, more inquiries, and so forth. And we'll have some of the panelists touch on this too. Like, why do you stream art? I know for me, it helps me stay focused, even though we get sidetracked with dumb stories and inside jokes. It's still, <laughs> like, I produce more within two hours of being on stream than if it was me with like a true crime documentary on the side, like drawing by myself. Um, so it, it really keeps me focused and then it's also just a way to like show my work to the world in a way. If I, I can jump in. Um, I think since it helps show the entire process or it can show the entire process from start to finish, um, it kind of helps people realize the value in art and why it costs as much as it costs because oftentimes people are like, this is expensive or I could do this myself. Um, you may have heard that before. Um, so I think when people actually see the entire process, it really helps them see firsthand like, oh, this is why they spent this much time. It took that much effort to do this. I also find it's, it's similar to being in a room full of like friends. You get a lot of friends together and draw and like bounce ideas off of each other. I've had merch created from like goofy ideas from the chats and I've created a lot of fun art and just got ideas for creating other things. So it's kind of like being in a big room full of creatives and just talking together and you know, like Caitlin said, like getting inside jokes. It's a lot of fun, just in general, just fun. A big reason why I started streaming was actually because art is like a really lonely thing. You're just kind of by yourself usually, unless you know you meet up with people at a cafe or something, which doesn't really happen too often, I would say. Um, so streaming on art I actually got to make a lot of art friends and like meet a lot of creatives that, you know, had the same passion and stuff like that. And I think, I don't know, that's a that's a big one for me, for why I started, anyways. And uh, I guess more on the business side, I mean, you do want people to start being invested in you because after a while. Because there's a lot of people who are really good at art these days. So it's like uh, when they want to hire you for something, often it's maybe more of like they like you as the, uh, a person and an artist more so than, you know, like your rate. And uh, streaming, they get to connect with you like one-on-one -on -one and kind of get more like about you. So I think that's really important. And I bet it's awesome to just see your art from three years ago to now. You can see how much you've grown as an artist. I'm pretty sure that's how you all feel. You're like, wow, look at this drawing from before. Look at it now. I've gotten so much better. And you get to share that with your community. So that's the fun part about this. And now we're going to talk about what you need to stream art, OK? Here's what you need. Here's some basics to get you started, OK? Of course, minimum needs, you need a computer or a phone to stream from, all right? You need a monitor, webcam or not, and a camera arm for a traditional artist a microphone to chat with your community and engage, and art tools and supplies that you'll need. And of course, internet. <laughs> That's how we all connect, right? Yeah. <laughs> and streaming equipment recommendations for digital artists. Of course, you need a streaming software, OBS, Streamlabs OBS, Stream Elements Live, and a Twitch app for mobile. And some tablet brands that they recommended were Wacom, <laughs> Huon, Huan, I think I'm saying that right. Huan. Huan. No <laughs> iPad, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> iPad, Apple Pencil, and an XP Pen. All right, and also some traditional art streaming equipment recommendations. Camera, uh, camera desk arm, bright white lighting so you can really see the full color of your art. And an important tip, make sure you check white balance so your artwork is not washed out. And any tips you want to give for any equipment that you started off with and how you grew to now? I, mean, I just started on my phone. Like, you don't, you don't really need anything fancy just to get going. Um, I think I went on Amazon and found, like, a little $20 thing that just holds the phone, and it had a little ring light on it. Um, super basic, but that's all you really need. And then as you start to grow, then you can start adding in, like, more supplemental and, you know, fancy stuff. 
Sorry, if we, if we go to the next slide, it actually shows our before and after, uh, yeah. how we started. So I guess we could go through and talk about that. Oh, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so like this one for my setup, um, you'll see it on the next slide. But like the first one was super basic. It's like camera, microphone, tablet, monitor. And now it's like a freaking space station type of thing. Like <laughs> <laughs> two monitors, a huge tablet, lights, better mic. Yeah, so just like upgrading slowly. And here's Casey set up. Yeah, like I started off with my phone. Like I said, I, I moved to Canada and I had an iPhone 6S or something. And I just bought a little arm and that's literally how I streamed on YouTube, sorry. I, I would have my phone <laughs> and just stream and then have the stream open so I could look at chat on, a, on my laptop. So I had a writing desk and a, and a laptop and my phone and that was it. Well, I had a microphone. But now I have like two screens, I have a HD camera for my face and the art, light. I would recommend natural light though if you don't have money to buy equipment. Natural light is the best light, which is unfortunate for nighttime, but you, there's some really good cheap tips for doing stuff on a budget, I feel like. And then we have Pokio set up. So I started off on a MacBook, it was a pretty old one, and it was like, lagging like crazy, but uh, I eventually upgraded to having th there are two monitors. Um, the current setup is actually the one that's on the lower side. Yeah, on the lower side. That's my current setup right now with the one of the three monitors. Um, I've upgraded to that so I can have the chat um, on a separate screen, whereas I can still draw on like the actual drawing tablet. Um, and yeah. And then we have Chris set up. Um, well, I'm primarily uh, traditional, so even though I have like three giant screens and that big old Cintiq on a swivel arm, I'm on that like just a couple weeks a year. Uh, but my, my traditional setup is, is pretty simple. Um, uh, I just have a, I have a webcam just hanging over up top, and then uh, you can see on the right side I have a, a Sony A6400. Uh, for the face. I do find that when you're doing a, f um, if you're showing your face when you're, you're drawing, it's like the higher quality that you have for your face. Actually, my numbers started going up for some reason. I don't know if it's, if it's this or if it's the camera. <laughs> um, no, but um, I don't have a picture. I don't think I brought up a picture of like my actual stream layout, but it's actually incredibly simple. Um, I'm a bit of a minimalist with mine and um, people seem to really uh, enjoy that, but it's, it's the same idea with my setup. Uh, it's just the mic on one side, overhead light um, above the, uh, the webcam and then the, the face camera on the right. I used to, uh, if, if you're not able to get like an arm that hangs over the table to shoot downwards onto your art and you have to do it over the shoulder, like a three quarter angle, put it on your non-dominant side because if you go on the dominant side, your hand's gonna cover it. It sounds obvious, but I mean, you can go on YouTube and you see a lot of that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Good tips. Thank you. And we're going to get into equipment upgrade recommendations. Of course, we have our microphones. You can upgrade to Blue Yeti, HyperX, Rode, Elgato mics, and cameras, Logitech C920, Elgato Stream Deck, Key Lights. So many, so many different <laughs> products out there that you can upgrade to and take advantage of. And there's always sales somewhere. Mm -hmm. Make sure you look for them. <laughs> Save money. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you all what um, are some of your favorite uh, products you have upgraded to for your setup? Uh, I really like the, oh my God, are they literally just called like the stream lights from Elgato? The, those the are key light. the key light. The, yeah, the yeah. Those, those are so nice. Key light yeah, key, key light. Air. Yeah, those yeah. are great. And then I really like my Shure microphone. I think are, those are my like top two upgrades. Perfect. Uh, was it the the Elgato Camlink Pro? Yeah. That's what allowed me to actually hook up my um, my higher end camera straight into the the computer, um, and that like made a huge difference because before I was feeding it through the USB-C and even that was just kind of like, it was like super choppy. When I upgraded to that, like the quality of all my stuff just went up and it was like lossless. And I think that's, you know, other than uh, upgrading lights, um, same lights, yeah. uh, I think that's my favorite thing. 
super unnecessary, but I got a green screen, so I'm just kind of like floating in front of my art, <laughs> which is really nice. Instead of having like a big rectangle taking up some good, you know, retail for art, but it's fun to mess around sometimes. You can make your head float, you know, feel like we're green. It's great. It can be silly sometimes. <laughs> Perfect. And we're going to talk about engagement in an art stream. What is there to talk about on Twitch or anyways? So if you've never been to an art stream, you might assume that an art stream is, you know, boring and slow, exists purely just to draw free art for viewers. No, absolutely not. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> what do you actually talk about in an art stream? And we could start off with our panelists. Honestly, it's just like a just chatting stream. Anyone can just talk about anything. A lot of the times we're just sharing life stories. Um, people will come in and always ask about art tips. So I think everyone does have art tips, whether they're a beginner or not. You know? So you know, we recommend things, um, talk about our own personal experiences with art and just what our art journey has been so far and stuff. Anime, TV, video games, you know, all of that stuff too, we talk about. <laughs> it is borderline just chatting, right? <laughs> it's right. almost just chatting. <laughs> just chatting plus an activity. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of like inside jokes that come out of it too that you start to build with your community that really helps you to connect to everybody. So it's like it's probably the opposite of what you're thinking like you know there's a lot of goofing off and stuff and things that are like the antithesis of professional but that's what makes it fun. Yeah like I said it's like being in a room full of friends so Either you're doing like Q&A stuff with your fans or you start talking about silly stuff or just asking questions. I mean, you could be drawing your art one second and then drawing inappropriate things on your art the next. You know? <laughs> like, what if they had this or what if they had that? You know? TOS friendly though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I find that um, the, the best conversations come up when um, the like less experienced artists or people who are trying to trying to figure it out come through um, I find those are the best conversations so like if you're in a position where they come to you for advice you really should like take a second to think about it because like some people really want help but um, for engagement I see that like people just love that um, plus you get to help someone so but yeah so if somebody comes to you about like advice for that you really should like I honestly take it very seriously but um, I know it's people really like that topic when it comes up yeah, I know there's a few artists that are kind of like they hold their secrets really close to their chest, but I think a lot of community members really appreciate when you're transparent. It's like, I don't know, if I tell them like my brush pack, it's not like they're stealing commissions, you know what I mean? Like a lot of artists feel like that, but I think it's so much better when you can open up and talk to them about your process. I mean, they're watching you anyway, so they see the process, so you might as well open up and chat with them about how you make your art. Awesome, I love that. And have any of you ever done like a full tutorial of like just drawing basics at all? Yeah, I definitely have. I get a lot of questions about how to draw hands. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've definitely done a hand tutorial before. Wow. I, I know I did one for like creating creative monsters. That's a really old YouTube video though. <laughs> really, really old. <laughs> you have to update it then. Yeah, yeah I gotta one. get a new one. <laughs> I mean, and I have I have YouTube videos where I you know show how to do certain things, but I don't know about streams. Sometimes people ask me like, oh, like how do you do this really quick? And I'll just like show them, but I've never done like a full on how to stream before. That's a lot. I don't know. Content idea. I got you. <laughs> yeah. Uh. We actually had a couple where it was set up almost like a, a Comic Con panel where I brought on some friends and we actually talked about the entire process of making enamel pins. Um, and tried to make it kind of like uh, a cross between like a tutorial and um, like an open like panel where people do Q&A. Um, and the thing about that is like, you know, you might think that turns into competition. It absolutely doesn't. Anybody can pick up like a pen or a computer or something and everyone's going to have a completely different outcome. So nothing to worry about. Absolutely. And let's get into how you can be a part of the Twitch art community. All right. So you're a streamer that wants to meet other streamers. Of course, we all want to meet other streamers, especially if we're in the same, you know, category of content. 
you have to be interactive, of course. Building that community is super important, all right? Everyone that comes in, you know, you can commentate what you're doing with your drawing. You can explain why you're doing this art, what it means to you, so forth. And do that with other streamers. You can even collab with them if you want. All right, rating another stream, that's how you, you know, that's how you communicate and bond with other streamers in that category. It's really important to share your community with others, you know, so they can watch somebody else too when you're offline. And in the art community, I think the category of art has changed so much over the years. You have to stick together and be with one another. It's really important with bonding and building those connections. So if someone else raids you, ask about their work. You know, what do you do? Are you a digital artist, traditional? You know, how does, what does art mean to you? That is a really good question to ask each and you know, every one Oop, there we go. And you're a viewer that wants to be a part of the art community. Lurking is always a perfect way to support all creators on Twitch, all right? Ask questions, you know, what does this art mean to you? How did you get into art and so forth? and participate in the streamer's community projects, challenges, and events, and just in discussion, you know? So we can talk about how you built your communities and how your community runs today. I know for me, I did a lot of um, like live creature creation in terms of like people would be like, all right, let's put like a platypus, a leopard, and like a stork in like a, a straw pole. And so we do a couple of those, merge them together, and then we would, like, I would make one, and audience members would also, like, create the creature with me. So we all had, like, the base thing, but all of the monsters that we made just were completely different. So that was a really fun way to, like, get them involved and oh, also make stuff. <laughs> uh, a majority of my streams are just, like, uh, we're in the sketchbook, and we're practicing and learning, and I'll, I'll have, like, specific topics that... I want to learn, but I frame it in a way where it's like, we are going to learn this. And uh, when they follow along, they, <laughs> you know what yeah, uh, so when they follow along, it, it, that, that has really built a, um, my community to be more like artists who are, who are wanting to like educate themselves uh, more so than anything else. So I, I don't know, that was uh, unintentional, but I'm happy with the way that it went. But um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I got them. That's how I got the crowd that I have now. It's because like, I started streaming because I was learning anyway. I just turned the camera on. That's who I attracted. So I guess what you're putting out there is, is going to be the kind of community you end up building. So I actually forgot. I used to have a hashtag that I would invite my viewers to draw and then like show me what they drew like on Twitter. I haven't done that in a while. But I have introduced this um, monthly uh, emote contest thing, which has been a lot of fun where I invite my viewers to invite, or I invite my viewers to design their own emote, and they get to have that emote on my channel for a month, and it is like the most thrilling thing ever. <laughs> you get super into like the votes, and it's like, who's gonna win? <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I enjoy that a lot. One thing I like to do every single week is something called an art challenge, and so basically, either the community or myself chooses a theme, and then people will draw something related to the theme, and then once it's the turn-in date, we'll all look at it together on stream and just kind of see what everyone has done. So if you actually look at the slide, that first picture right there, that's somebody else's art, and we're all looking at it together because the theme was transform, and they drew like a werewolf or something. So yeah, and then we're all like, yay, wow, amazing. And, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's something fun that we do all the time. That's really cool because it like brings the community into your stream mm -hmm. and then shines like a spotlight on. Yeah, I've actually made a lot of friends um, and learned about other people's streams thanks to just doing this art challenge thing every single week. So, yeah, it's been fun. And it's been a while since I did one of these, but uh, we used to do what I called Fan Art Friday, where me and uh, several other art streamers would um, each pick like a time slot, and then we would raid. We do basically a raid train, just like raiding into each other, and um, it was a fun like kind of community thing because people would start you know at the beginning of the raid train and get to experience all these different styles of artwork and all these different artists, and it kind of helps like um, you know build your audience and kind of like allow everyone to connect to each other. Wonderful. And that's how you are a viewer of an art stream. <laughs> <laughs> and we are approaching our conclusion here. 
So we have some things to keep in mind. You don't need to be a pro to stream art. You can literally stream your journey from starting to now, all right? It's so fun to just go back and think, wow, I used to do this this way, I used to do this art technique, now I'm doing something different now. And just being a part of that journey and seeing how you improve is beautiful. And you get to share that story with other people. And equipment is accessible, it doesn't have to be expensive, all right? Literally, you could buy a <laughs> tripod on Amazon for 10 bucks, put your phone up there and get going. And you can stream directly on a Twitch app. Oh. If you had the money to buy a TwitchCon ticket, you have money to get enough stream gear to start streaming. <laughs> Facts. A hundred percent. Yes. And don't forget to interact with your community and also interact and participate with other art communities. Like we saw in a previous slide, sharing your art with each other's community, reacting, drawing along is beautiful. And we love that. And remember why you started streaming. It's easy to feel bad about low interaction from chat. But don't look at the numbers, all right? Just focus on you, your art, and your community, all right? Engage with the people that are there and continue to grow, all right? It's a journey. We're all here <laughs> to grow and, and be happy with that progress, you know? Every bit of progress is amazing. And you should be proud of yourself. So don't lose sight of your creative ambitions ever. And if the panelists had any other tips to give people that are new to art or want to get into art, that would be perfect. Yeah, actually, uh, one thing that I think is kind of important to address because it affects like basically every artist is we all go through imposter syndrome. All of us, no matter what stage you are in your art career, you're always going to feel like there's somebody better than you. Am I good enough? Like those kinds of thoughts and feelings. And it, it almost like helps knowing that like we all experience it. Um, so don't let anything intimidate you. Like, you know, just you are where you are in your art journey and just keep progressing. Yeah, and don't wait until you're ready because you'll never be ready. Just start doing it. <laughs> start doing it. <laughs> Part of the reason, besides wanting friends um, that, that also are into art, another reason is to document the whole process or it, just the whole uh, progression from when you first started to where you are now. And I think any artist can feel that they feel really good after they see their really old art and they're like, oh, what's that, you know, and then <laughs> compared to now and they're like, wow, I'm actually, I'm actually getting better even if you're probably not feeling too good about it like in current times, you know? So, yeah. yeah, and I think for me I would say like start with things you're passionate about because if you're passionate about it, your community will feel that passion through what you make and it's really easy to draw something you like. So like I draw a lot of dragons, I don't care. I draw like a ton of them. And so like 90% of the stream is dragons because it's fun. So that's just fun to start with something that you like, so. Perfect, thank you. And then we're going to get into, our streams are pretty great, you know? Our streaming is still a unique and very recent thing in a video game dominated Twitch, you know? While not too many people know about our streaming, we're here, you know? We have this panel here, now you know about it. Share it with your friends, you know? Get into it slowly, all right? Get the equipment you need and get started. All right, we're here to create. <laughs> we're all here to create. It might not be drawing, it could be something else. We are creators as a whole, together. All right, so let's make some art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we can get started with Q&A if we have any questions from anybody here. And we have our mics here if you wanna make a line and we can start questions. Also, could we get the other half of the ticket stubs so I could start Tearing them while we take questions. Thank you. <laughs> this thing. Oh, hi. Yep, perfect. Um, I guess for one of them in terms of like 
bringing community over from like other uh, channels. I like, I think my main one is YouTube. That's probably my largest thing. Um, so I just like post about it. I plug it in videos. I just post it on everything. Like, I know it feels a little weird to market yourself like heavily, but you kind of got to do it. <laughs> so you just like market and then um, just like push it constantly. That is one of the important tips I heard about commissions one time is it feels weird to advertise yourself so much, but you need to because not everyone's going to see it the first time you post it. So if you're going to start streaming on Twitch then, and you already have a following somewhere else, then post it once. Maybe after a day, you can post it again. Hey, I'm actually streaming on Twitch. Or just like, kind of like keep putting it in there. Like, hey, did you know I stream on Twitch? You know, like kind of how people do with Patreon. Yeah. And I think that'll bring some people to your stream, announce it on your Insta stories or Twitter and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it, it definitely seems more like it's, they're just not seeing your post more than they're not interested in it. Like if you have a big, because uh, I start off mainly YouTube as well. And most of the things that got me started on Twitch were the people I brought over. But I mean, I had what, like 50K on YouTube at that time? And I barely got like a couple hundred of them. But that's because they didn't see your stuff. That's why you have to just keep reminding them. So even though, like they said, it, it feels weird to keep plugging yourself, I mean, to, to them, you, they're only seeing it like one, once or twice, even though you're putting it up like 10, 15 mm -hmm. times. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of other platforms are notorious for shadow banning like other platforms like twitter doesn't like it if you say the word shop or like twitch or something so it does feel obnoxious to keep telling people that you have this or that going but you're just gonna have to get over it and just keep telling them over and over i think until because also you can't expect everyone to be on twitter 24 7 so like if they weren't there during that you know 30 minute span they probably didn't see it and they'll never see it so maybe the next day they'll see it Oh, and to answer, I think you asked about raids too. Um, so that's kind of, it kind of ties into the whole marketing thing. The first thing you want to do is of course thank the streamer who raided you. You want to be sure to sh uh, shine a spotlight on them and their community, um, you know, usually saying just something like, oh, how was your stream? What did you guys do? Um, and then sometimes like to try and help entice people to stay uh, with me once they raid over instead of just like, you know, unplugging and walking away. Sometimes I'll try and do like a little giveaway, like maybe for some stickers or something, you know, nothing that's like too expensive or out there, but it's enough to like tantalize people to like, oh, maybe I should give her a follow. Maybe I should stick around for a little bit and see what this is about. So, you know, just whatever you can do in a way, it is kind of like marketing and promo all over again, but anything you can do to retain those, uh, th that viewership is really important. Yeah, and sometimes I have like one of my better art pieces like completed like on another tab. So when someone raids, I'm like, okay, well, hey, look, this is my stuff. Like I know we're like at the sketch stage, but here's like a finished one that I have, and that that can help retain people because they don't see the finished art yet, and so that helps too. I've definitely seen some people stay just because of like whatever personality-wise they did. Um, for example, I'm going to use a different art streamer. Uh, his name is Batsky. Batsky Starman, he has this raid alert where he like multiplies like Naruto and then he starts like dancing and stuff and then like that usually keeps a lot of people there. So it's like things like that, that fit with his personality really shine through and then that's like why people would stay sometimes too. And then seeing his art too, of course, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, when you're starting art or streaming or anything in general that's kind of skill intensive, there's always a phase where your ego is much higher than your actual ability. My question is, how do you let yourself go through the part where you're not very good, but you're okay with being not very good and get to the point that you can improve? I think for me, it was just kind of like, I don't know, you kind of humble up pretty quick in a way, like just have fun with what you're doing. Because if you're having fun and someone comes in and kind of dogs on you or maybe you don't feel as confident in your work like if you're just having fun with the thing you're making it kind of helps overshadow that lack of confidence the, the only in my experience the only uh, artists or people who have the time to like try to make you feel bad about your art really aren't worth listening to anyway so if somebody comes in while you're, you're drawing and they say something 
they, they don't really matter anyway. So I don't know why you shouldn't let that affect you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, if you're able to identify, like with your drawing, if you could identify where your weaknesses are, then you should work on that. Yeah, I think it's it's really hard just as an artist in general to remember that everybody grows at a different speed and everyone's end end goal for their art is different. So I don't know. That's a that's a really personal question, I think. How you get confidence as an artist basically. Yeah, I think you just have to go on, please. <laughs> if you have something to say. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. So. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a tough one though. Yeah. Uh, but also, uh, you know, long term as an artist, you know, having a, a really big ego is going to make life really, really hard. So, uh, again, I, I don't know your situation, but like just chilling out will help you a lot. You know, so if you, you start uh, streaming and you only get like three viewers for like the first couple of months or something, you know, just one, don't take it personally, but also, I mean, what makes you think you, you really, you know, quote, quote, deserve more, you know what I mean? Just kind of yeah. like, oh, this is, I don't get what I deserve, I get what I get. And then you could just do, do your best, and if you're getting the results, if that's the result of you doing your best, you should be able to sleep at night with that. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. I know for me, I just have the chat kind of large so I can at least see it nearby and have it close to where my canvas is so I can see it simultaneously. Um, but then like, I don't know, I have like ways that they interact with me too. Like I have them do like posture checks or hydrates and then that makes me stop, look at the chat and like correct my posture so I don't like have a terrible hunchback. But yeah, like that helps a lot. Yeah, it's just really important that you do engage, though. It's like super important, and that uh, sometimes that might be the thing that's holding some artists back from growing some numbers is if they aren't, you know, addressing the audience and talking to them because, you know, you, again, it's all about the connection and wanting to connect to the artist. And so, yeah, like I for sure know that my work does slow down. I'm not as productive when I'm streaming. Like that's just there's no way around it for me because I have to spend half of my energy, uh, you know, watching chat and talking to everybody. It's just that's just how it is. So I just try and carve out time when I know I can be slower. And that's when I stream. Yeah, drawing and talking at the same time is definitely a skill that you have to grow because it's very hard to do but yeah I would even if you have like we said three people watching and if they're not talking in chat it's, it helps if you're like a really chatty person and you just like talk to yourself you know if you're like me and you just walk around your house talking to yourself you know or your cats <laughs> that's a good that's a good skill to have because then if someone does pop into your stream the fourth person and you're talking then that'll keep them there but yeah talking and drawing is definitely something you just have to work on in general so don't give up and keep trying. <laughs> one, thing my, one thing I try to keep in mind is uh, it's your stream, so the pacing is up to you. If you have to draw right now, then start drawing. People will chat, you can get to it once, once you're done drawing. So I try to like space it out between uh, maybe like a minute of drawing or even just 30 seconds of drawing, glancing back to see if there's anything new. If there isn't, then I'll just go back to drawing. If there is something new, then I'll just kind of like go through the chat and answer questions or anything that people said. And for the most part, I actually don't miss too much in chat, unless they're all like going crazy or something. But yeah, the pacing is up to you. So just keep that in mind. Oh, and just to add one more thing, it's also important to have a good team of mods that can keep an eye out. So if your chat goes wild, they can do slow mode. And that helps a lot, too. Don't let your mods push you around, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's what mods are there for, to hassle the streamer. Just, just a side note, Do, you know Ergo Josh? I've seen him put a, um, he puts like a timer where uh, it'll just be pure drawing, and then I think it's like 30 minutes or an hour at a time, and then once that goes down, then he's fully invested in the chat, 
And I guess during that time, the chat is able to kind of come up with different things to ask. Because if you're, if you're focused for like half an hour, you're getting a lot of stuff done. Like, like I said, we all slow down while we're chatting. Um, so that gives his, his audience a chance to like build up a lot of questions. And when he turns off the timer and he's fully engaged with them, then he's just like, you know, and then he's still getting work done. So I think that's a really efficient way to do it. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> hi. Um, so my question is, is, what really helped you guys determine how your layouts for like your, both your stream and your physical like layout for your stuff, like what helped decide, like how long did it take you guys to experiment with like your ergonomics and then your layout for your stream to decide, yeah, that looks good enough and I'm gonna leave it alone for a few months until I like bothers me too much, you know? I think my setup has changed like seven times in the five years I've been in my house. So it's like, Every time I'm like, oh, I think I should move this here because this is a little better. And then it just slowly gets to a point I like and it still is changing. So yeah, it's, I don't know. There's not a for sure time limit, just <laughs> a lot of trial and error. I think it will continuously change based on whatever your needs are at that time. Like your, let's say your feet were fine like three months ago, but like let's say your ankles are hurting now, you're gonna start changing things up, you know, like, like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I recently switched to a standing desk for the digital art uh, side of what I do, and it's it's helped a lot because I I realize like when I do digital for some reason I look this a lot, so I needed to push it upwards and, and that. So uh, I think if you just pay attention to what's starting to ache, I think you'll be able to okay. make the proper adjustments. Definitely okay. And you can look back and watch your old streams too, and you're like, oh, my face is not visible. Let me move my camera. <laughs> Yeah, just keep trying things, seeing what works, see what doesn't work. There's no shame in having a different layout every single stream as you try <laughs> things out. You know, never let your chat know what you're going to do next, you know? Maybe your head will be on the left this time. I'll, I'll just flip upside down, no worries. Yeah. Keep yeah, them on their exactly. toes. <laughs> Boy, they do notice when you change little things, huh? <laughs> when did that pixel get there? Don't worry about it. Come on, just draw. <laughs> Come on, it's just a pixel. A lot of what helped me was actually watching other people's streams to see what stream layouts I liked whenever I watched them. So um, kind of like uh, Chris, I like to keep it pretty minimalist. And so I just have my screen of whatever I'm drawing and then a webcam and probably some alerts that I actually use to like look at when I look at OBS, like if there's a new follow or if there's a new sub or something. And I, I like to look at it like that. As for the physical setup, um, it takes a long time mostly because of financials. Like a lot of things are expensive. But um, yeah, I think it's just going to be an ever-changing thing forever. Because I just changed the standing desk too. Um, I got like the ergo arm where you can like move the monitor back and forth and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But even then, I feel like it's still not perfect. So it's just going to be an ever-changing thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're all works in progress, so are our streams. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. When I feel like things are getting slow, I'll just start like vocalizing what I'm doing. Like, all right, so I'm gonna rotate this perspective right here, right? And then like, <laughs> just like drag it out. And uh, you're kind of creating conversation, but you're, you're creating it based on like the thing that you're drawing already. So it's like, I mean, it's already there. Um, if they engage with it, and people who watch art streams usually are other artists. So you, that would be the best way to kind of like throw darts at the board and maybe start a conversation. Yeah, and then I go through like, oh, I just watched like this new movie on Netflix. And then if there's crickets, I'm like, oh, cool. Well, then I went out and checked out this new boba shop recently. I just go through whatever's been happening in my life. Like I'm talking to like a friend. And then once chat like latches on something, we'll focus on that for quite a while. So that helps. Yeah, just um, saying 
everything that I'm doing, just narrating what I'm doing or just like word vomiting every thought that just comes out with a little bit of censoring, of course. You know, I don't want to say everything, but, you know, just like talking away. I, I guess it helps if you just really like to talk. I don't know. <laughs> Do you find that bleeds into your normal life? I, I started ex- like saying everything I'm doing with my art on stream for the engagement purpose. And I, I feel like I do that with everything I do. I already did that. Yeah. I already did that. Yeah, yeah 100%. I think I'll go in the kitchen and do it. Just do it, Casey. You don't need it to let everybody know in the house, a.k.a. the two cats. You, the cats don't need to know that you're going to the kitchen. No, that's just me. Uh, well, and people also love drama. They love gossip. So, you know, since I do a lot of conventions, um, I'll, sometimes I'll just start telling stories, you know, weird things that happen interesting people I saw, and sometimes that can spark like a whole discussion in itself. So you can tell them, thank you. I think a lot, oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you wanna go? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of the conversations I have is also just stories of like weird people I met, or like, I don't know, just weird experiences I've been, or gossip, like mm-hmm. you said. Um, but yeah, sorry. Or, or food, I talk about food a lot. <laughs> I think like every 20 minutes, I don't know. <laughs> and sometimes you can just do something simple like throw up a poll in your chat just to get people like, you know, what's your favorite fast food place or something, you know, that can like start a whole thing too. Asking what they're currently working on and what they're drawing or if they have a project or, you know, uh, when you ask that, usually you kind of like, people love to talk about their projects. So you could start filling up the chat real quick just by asking what they're doing. They're like, oh, yeah, tell me all about it. And they'll tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Hi. Uh, so I was wondering, what would you, what, uh, what bit rate and resolution would you recommend for someone who has a bit slower or uh, more inconsistent internet? Ooh. It's a little bit harder for your technical side. Uh, bit rate resolution. I don't know. I think you could probably get away with, uh, oh, God, I don't know screen sizes past a certain size. Uh, what, are, what are they, 1080? And what's the other one? <laughs> yeah, I think you could get away with 720. That might be a good enough resolution if your internet's slow. Yeah, I was using uh, 720 um, at 24 frames for the longest time. Actually, before I upgraded my internet, I was uh, 720 at 20 frames. And because I was doing traditional art, nobody noticed. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I would flip it around and be like, all right, I'm gonna do 24 today, I'll do 30. But then it, it'd start laggy at 30, and so I dropped it down to 20, and nobody noticed. So um, I, I haven't tried that with digital. Does, does the cursor like start to hop around? It's not too bad. I don't think, yeah. I, I find dropping uh, your FPS um, while like gamers can't really do that because like it's very obvious when when you're drawing nobody notices so that's an easy way to kind of minimize the load. Yeah, and, um, if you know this is going to be a recurring problem, then keep your phone handy because you can always just go on self-service and say, hey, you know, go in your chat and say, hey guys, sorry, like internet's down, just hang on like five minutes, I'm resetting it right now, and that can often help like retain the viewers. Uh, Get a husband that is really good with tech. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my big tip. <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> right, thank you. Yeah. That's all I got. No taking intensifies. <laughs> I think I have the same setup as you, Casey. <laughs> you got one of those husbands, too? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, uh, Try to consider that this is all going to be mostly all seen on mobile phones. So try to consider perhaps making fonts look bigger and try to lower your bid rate so that people that are going through like the subway or some other part where the signal's not that great, uh, they can still load. Because I've been having so many issues to try to like watch the stream. It cuts out because it's only locked at 1080 or 720. And the quality, you can adjust that. So. Uh, it cuts out a lot, so take that into consideration if that's helpful. Cool. Absolutely. I apologize if this was already covered, but if you've had a brand or a sponsorship um, for your art channel, can you speak a little bit more on that? 
think you got to Also on like how yes. how to potentially gain a art sponsorship. Well, I've only had one my entire time and um I'm still currently with them. Uh I all seem some young people. Who here knows about deviant art? Okay. I do. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, deviant art approached me last last year. Uh, they're having a, they were looking for Twitch streamers uh, to kind of carry the brand and bring people to the site, and um, they found me through. Um, oh, they found me through doing conventions. So I think for me, the only. Um, the only sponsor I got was because I put myself out there and like met them at the con. Yeah. But um, in regards to like reaching through the internet, um, I I know I've sent some like tweets or Instagram messages here and there where I like, like their brand and want to interact. And sometimes that sticks. It's a little hard if you do what would it, that's like almost like cold calls. Um, or if you have the opportunity to talk to someone like at a booth at a convention for something, because that's how I met up with like Illo Sketchbooks and they had, they sponsored like two of my contests. It's just because I met someone in person at a convention and talked to them and told them about my stuff. So yeah, it's kind of a, a random happenstance, but you can also try to like reach out to someone within the company too. Yeah, it never hurts to shoot them an email. I mean, what's the worst that can happen is they'll ignore you. Um, I don't have any experience with streaming sponsorships. It's more the videos, the YouTube videos for me, but usually they just approach me, but it doesn't hurt to email them. Yeah, just email them. Yeah, that's what I did with Arteza. I like bought one of their paint packs and I was like, I'm gonna just try this. And then I tagged them and they're like, oh, hello. And then they send me an email and I'm like, okay, cool, sponsorship. So sometimes you gotta put some money up for their stuff and then they'll come back and be like here. So, yeah. I guess that falls into the same thing we were talking about earlier about, you know, you, you, you may be uncomfortable promoting yourself over and over and over, but then when you're reaching out to companies or, or you know, try, even trying to get commissions, it's the same thing. You gotta, whether or not you're comfortable with it, you gotta at least try it. There's this uh, stream elements partnership type program. Um, you can apply for that, and if you get in, they usually have a lot of different sponsorships that they can offer you. I've, I've worked with Final Fantasy VII before and just did like random artwork and stuff, um, just to promote the new remake and stuff like that. Like, um, I worked with some other game companies before just because they've reached out to me through that stream elements thing. So. Um, that could be a good focus is to join something like that so that you can get some more sponsorships through it. Solid, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so I know that you guys talked about this a little bit in the presentation, but uh, comparing like, uh, like your own art to other people's art could uh, sometimes be really difficult even though it's kind of important not to do that. So do you guys have any more specific tips on how to like stop doing that? Yeah, I think one thing that helped me a lot was um, doing some art challenges, like you know, Inktober or something, because anything that can take a lot of the pressure off of you, where it's like, oh, you only have this amount of time, so you know, of course it's not gonna be your very best work. Being able to just do a bunch of those can sometimes help, because um, it helps you not only like, you know, uh, like I guess get better at your craft, but also do it in a way where you're not feeling pressured and comparing yourself so much. And I think it's always hard because we all have those yeah. mental low days where we see someone, we're like, oh my God, they're like 12 and they're drawing <laughs> how I am now. <laughs> you know, we all have those. So I think what helps me a lot is like looking at my old work and seeing, uh, comparing myself to my old self. And I'm like, no, no, Caitlin, you can calm down, look how much you've progressed. And then focusing in on like things I want to make and projects I want to complete, that helps me a lot. Where I'm like, nah, I can't, I can't be sad. I gotta, I gotta draw this thing. <laughs> so, yeah. 
It's true. Sometimes if you get so busy, you can't even, you have no time. Yeah, to I'm too busy to <laughs> be sad. <laughs> There, there's like two different ways you can use comparison. Like um, the, the healthy way is to look at somebody's artwork that you deem is better than yours and just pick it apart and find the things that you want to learn how to do. That's the responsible way to do it and that's how you're going to get better. I feel like if you're, if you're especially on social media too much, because I don't like to be on social a lot, um, but it's my job. But uh, <laughs> it, I feel like if you browse artwork and you're allowing it to make you feel bad, then you, you gotta just put it down for a little bit and be a little bit more responsible. Say, I can't use this responsibly. Just gotta put it down, I'm just gonna draw. You know, make out the things that, write out a list of things that you need to get better at with your art. Just put this down and then go work on that. And if you do that, I know asking somebody to get off a of social for like a week is a lot to ask. But you'd be surprised how much better, how much progress you're going to make with your, your drawing if you just step away from it for a little bit. And then f what, every time I do that, I notice I care a little bit less about other people's artwork. Because at the end of the day, it actually has nothing to do with your artwork. And that's what's going to be most beneficial to you, like up here. Yeah, and then you can be a... <laughs> You can also be a pro at the post and run. You post and then you put it away and that's it. Um, I've also set like on my iPhone, I have time limits on certain apps because I used to refresh the YouTube studio. I'm like, oh my God, did I get a new subscriber? Did I? And then when it started going down, I'm like, oh, this is bad. This is bad. So I set like a one minute time limit. I cannot look at that app any longer than a minute and it locks me out hard. So that's helped me a lot too. A lot of it is also just mindset. Um, whenever you see another artist, it's useless to compare it to yourself because the journey that you guys have taken or taken to uh, get to the certain art level that you're at is totally different. The inspirations you have are totally different. The uh, just life experiences you've had are all really different. And like Chris said, it it doesn't even matter to your art, right? So um, one thing I like to remember is whatever I'm creating right now. If I think it's cool, then I'm the only one who can make it. No one else is going to make what I'm making right now. So just focus on wanting to finish that project and share it if you want to share it. You don't have to, you know. Yeah. You've seen the weird things that people give likes to, so it shouldn't bother <laughs> you if you don't get any of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, question, what is Twitch doing to promote the art streams and the artists, and uh, more specifically, also like what uh, what metrics are you guys looking at from your streams and stuff? And how do I compete with Bob Ross? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to beat Bob Ross. <laughs> so actually, um, I think it was last year in November they actually did a whole month of November where they uh, put different artists and creatives um, on the I think they call it the carousel, the front page carousel. Um, and so you're basically on it for like, I think about an hour. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. I was actually part of it too, and it was, it was crazy. But yeah, um, I, think, I think they are trying, and then th things like the Artist Alley here too. I think that's, you know, there's a lot of stuff that they're doing to try and help like push artists a little bit more, which is cool. Sometimes I'm just happy that they have an art section. I don't know who here uploads videos to YouTube. Yeah. There's no, I, I've been uploading for like almost a decade. There's still no button on there that says art or artists or creation. You have to put in like people in blogs or education. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, but uh, just side note, when you go into the art section and you're scrolling down and you're trying to find different people to look at, you can hit the bottom of it. That's how few artists there are. So I think that's pretty cool like to get engagement. Um, personally, I would like to see a little bit more effort from Twitch to push artists more because when I first started on Twitch, which was six years ago, there was this channel called the Adobe channel and they would like partner up with like a whole bunch of different art streamers and they would promote them. And um, I'm pretty sure that was in partnership with Twitch. There used to be like an art contest where like, you know, Twitch streamers could do a game art for a sponsorship that was ran by Twitch and stuff like that. So personally, I would like to see a little bit more. There is still some push for it. Um, but I do think there's part of a reality check that a lot of what Twitch gets promoted is a lot of video game stuff. Um, but yeah, um, that doesn't mean, that doesn't take away from art streaming though. I think art streaming is special in its own way because we're all there for like the, our own special interests and like 
uh, meeting other artists and stuff like that. It's not really just to grow big or anything like that. So I think there's more value to it. No way, personally, that's how I feel. <laughs> It's small, but Twitch did do the uh, emote artist uh, thing. Oh, yeah, you can tag your yeah. artist yeah. for your emotes. Yeah, yeah. so at least yeah. there's that. Now, like, big streamers can tag or, like, give credit to whoever artist did their emote. Mm -hmm. So that's good, which I do use for my monthly contest thing. But um, I don't know. What is Twitch doing for artists? That's a good question. <laughs> Twitch? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like um, the emote thing. Um, Hello. So I was curious what y'all do when it comes to having a boundary between what you want to create and what your community is interested in. Because I've had people come and be like, oh, you're drawing this again. And I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do with that. So. My name is on the stream. That's what I tell them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, I get to pick what it is. No. <laughs> no um, I don't know. I. I I never really ask them for input. It's kind of like, and it might be different for everyone here, but like I don't have a, um, an itinerary built around my stream. I have like my itinerary, and that's what I'm going to be streaming. Yeah, it's hard to be harsh um, to your audience sometimes. Like, you know, you want people to stay there, so you're not going to, you don't want to be like, no, I'm not doing this. But in the end, it is your like show. Like, you are doing what you want to do. I personally do have streams where I do like dumb doodles where I'll have them request certain things and I'll just do like a silly little doodle. So that's like sort of my outlet to let them tell me what to draw sometimes. But in the end, it is what you are drawing what you want to. And I think it is hard to tell them no sometimes. But I think you just have to sort of stick to your guns and, you know, let, let them know what you're doing today. And they're welcome to join you. And if they don't want to, they don't have to. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think you just have to uh, be honest and harsh sometimes yeah and i think the community members that like you for what you do and what you make will stick around so it i don't think you should worry about if there's some that come in and they're like oh my gosh can you draw like sailor moon today or like a specific thing like you know they might just be a fleeting thing that comes in and demands something and then runs you know like stick to your guns and the community will follow you and what you like to make so yeah, I think it's kind of similar to like if you take commissions, you already kind of have your own boundaries of like maybe I'm not going to do this, I won't do that character, I won't do anything that's not family friendly. So just, you know, stick to your guns, set your own boundaries ahead of time, stick to your guns. And um, I think the most important thing is like creating what you want to create because then the passion comes through. And if you start doing it because, you know, it's almost like a client relationship where they're telling you to do something and you do it and you can tell it's just not as good as like the art that you're passionate about. So yeah, just be you. I do think sometimes, uh, well, so I work on a comic on my stream and I have to do that because a lot of the times artists just are doing like other things like let's say like con prep and they're like making things for convention or they're just working on something that has to get done. So sometimes you just gotta like separate what you wanna do for the stream viewers versus what you have to actually get done. Um, like Casey, I actually have a point redemption called scuff, scuff doodles. So if anyone wants like a little tiny doodle, then I'll just like do it on the spot or something and have a limit of three. So if people actually want it, then they'll just redeem it on that day or something. So that is a good way to kind of do something for them and then work on your own thing at the same time. Awesome. Thank you. And we are all done with Q&A. But don't worry, we can still ask questions in the hallway, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for joining us today. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your weekend here at TwitchCon.